The Buzz with Jess Lujan. Hey, good evening, Guam. I'm Jess Lujan. Welcome to this edition of The Buzz. I'm really excited tonight. I got former Lieutenant Governor, now Chairman of the Chamber of Commerce, and of course, the former Legislative Oversight for Finance. Whew. <laughs> the hot seat nowadays, right? Anyway, hey, Kaleo, it's so good to see you. Good, good to evening. see you, Governor. Let's just go right to a point where we, uh, we left off, basically, back in 2005. You wrote the synopsis on, uh, on our trip to Okinawa when we first heard, when at least we first heard, uh, as lawmakers here in Guam back then, about the military buildup. And this is what you wrote, and I, I'm just going to read the first paragraph. The U.S. Department of Defense has negotiated relocation costs for the government of Japan for the movement of 8,000 Marines from Okinawa, Japan to Guam. Details of the planned realignment have been scarce, and the government of Guam officials have received no details on the extent of the realignment over the long term or any insight into the needs to support shifts in military resources and it goes on and then some of the things that you pointed out here were basically political status voting member in congress tax code revision jones act reform uh airline airline routes port improvement health care unified school system with additional schools integrated uh, and upgrade of existing water systems uh, upgrades of public safety facilities, community and cultural attraction, return of excess lands with no conditions, mass transit systems, solid waste management, recycling programs, community, com community impact mitigation programs, territorial highway projects, federal procurement uh, equality to Guam-owned businesses. This was 2005. Six years later, you know what? I say, man, did you just write this this afternoon? <laughs> <laughs> well, no. Um Back then, we were in the planning stages, mm -hmm. and, and that was a, a plan of action, a, a roadmap, if you will, to try to make a successful transition uh, for the military realignment efforts from Okinawa to Guam. Mm -hmm. And as you know, we, we took a trip together yes. with a group of senators down mm -hmm. to Okinawa to take a look at what Okinawa had done uh, to uh, support uh, the mm -hmm. military mission. And so during that trip, we learned a lot of things, mm -hmm. and uh, what we learned was that we needed to have a good line of communication between mm -hmm. uh, the local government and Congress, mm -hmm. as well as the local government. Actually, at the time when we were meeting with the uh, Okinawa officials, they were always referring to their national government, which is our, their equivalent to our federal government. So how they were asking their national government to provide them with this, because this is what's going on. They needed these for mitigation purposes. So their national government is our version of the federal government. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so what we were looking at was, uh, how to make this work uh, in the time frame. At that time, the time frame that we were looking at was very short, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm glad to see that the time frame is stretched out mm -hmm. so that the impact on, on the inflationary impact uh, to the island uh, could be mitigated. But uh, the, the, the points raised were uh, points of discussion mm -hmm. so that uh, we could see uh, improvements in the infrastructure and the quality of life uh, for everyone that calls Guam home, mm -hmm. not just on base or off base, That's but right. for everybody mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. So that was really the point of the paper. And, and as we uh, toured Okinawa, uh, we saw the improvements uh, overall that were made as a result of them hosting mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, these bases uh, in Okinawa. So when we came back home, you know, we dra drafted the mm -hmm. paper mm -hmm. to ensure that you know these were some of the things that we captured. Mm -hmm. Uh, as a matter of fact, as a result of you drafting your position paper on our trip over there, uh, quite a few resolutions came out of, of that from the, from the legislature at the time to present to not just leaders here, to our delegate, also to Congress at the time also because actually when we were, when we were in Okinawa, remember the, uh, the State Department was, was sitting down with the Japanese diet actually negotiating in the negotiating table at the time as we were visiting Okinawa. That was when, huh? <laughs> That was a long time ago. Yeah, it was a long time ago. <laughs> you know, you always said at the time, too, that that was the time. It was important for us to make sure our voices are heard, in not, only, not only in the areas here of identification, but one of the top things you said, this is the time to get our, our political self-determination. This is the time. Let's not miss this boat. You know, political self-determination, uh, political status, mm -hmm. if you want to call it that, uh, is an important uh, peace for this community, for economic growth, mm -hmm. uh, and for um, self-respect. Mm -hmm. But uh, 
the discussion of political status has occurred long before the buildup. Sure, it, sure. it was a piece, a centerpiece in, in political life on Guam for many decades. And both uh, the leadership in Guam and in the United States, uh, in the White House, the Congress, and at the Department of Defense, recognized that that issue should be on the table for reasons not related to the buildup, but for more strategic reasons for, uh, uh, for not just national security, but also for economic sustainability and viability mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of the region. Um, and so here we have now the attention of the U.S. Congress. You know, um, we should use that attention mm -hmm. to say we need to come back and sit, uh, to the table mm -hmm. and, and talk about this mm -hmm. issue. Uh, this issue is not just important to the people mm -hmm. of Guam, but if you look at the entire region, mm -hmm. it's really important to you as well that we close this chapter uh, on, on, uh, on this political question mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and move forward. Move forward. So. Okay. I tell you what, in this next block, uh, we're going to be able to open up the phone lines for your, your calls. Uh, give us a call and give us your views. 632-8255, 632-TALK uh, to give us a call tonight. But we'll be right back. More with uh, former Lieutenant Governor Clay Moreland.